Yeah, I don't know what the details of the Jesse Smollett story are going to end up being. What I do know is right now, the story just doesn't make sense in the pieces that it's laid out as, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that he is lying. I'm just saying that his story doesn't seem to line up with what's happening, because these guys admitted to punching him. So that part of the story is now effectively dead, right? You can't look for people when they said, yes, we are the guys that punched him. Now the story is going to be, did you pay them to punch you or not? Are they part of it or not? And then it has to be like, well, then why did they do this to you just randomly? Like, why are two Nigerian guys walking around in Chicago's freezing weather <laughs> and then shouting, this is mega country? <laughs> like, it's a weird thing to shout as a Nigerian person. <laughs> this is like a strange... So, yeah, no, like, it's, I don't know where it's going to go, how it's going to go. I do know if I was Trump, this is a home run in my world. <laughs> because so many people jumped on board before they even, like, waited to see what it was about. They're like, it's just like, I don't know, we live in a world where people are, are too enthusiastic at jumping at stories that confirm their biases, and instead of just pausing and going, <laughs> what do I make of the story? <laughs> what do I make of this story? Of my own volition, forget your political anythings. You know, this is like, what do you, d does it confirm your biases? That's when I always think you have to be even more vigilant, is when it confirms everything you've believed. And this goes for both sides of people with like, because Trump supporters are in the deepest conspiracies ever. It's not like anyone's immune to this. But I think increasingly since Trump has come into power, people have become increasingly willing to accept any story that confirms anything about a Trump supporter or Trump or a white person or it, it's just like, and I always go like, do not become the thing that you disdain. Do not become the thing that you hate because then what are you fighting for if you've become the thing that you're trying to fight against? So just take a moment, just be like, yo man, how do I feel about the story? What is this? And then you go from there. And I will say, if, if Jesse's lying, like he's, he's completely screwed. I don't know where you go. I don't know where, you know? It does sound like an empire plot line, I will say that. <laughs> like, if I, I would, if I was the empire people, I'd be like, we'd set the whole thing up. As a commentary on society. <laughs> that's, that's what I would do. <laughs> I don't know, because right now, really, it's either Jussie gets these guys arrested and sent to jail, or he comes out and says, no, I worked with them. Yeah. That's the only, you realize those are the only options. These guys go to jail for hate crime, by the way, not just assault, for a hate crime, or, you know, and now he's like, oh, the cops, how do we trust these Chicago cops? They've lied about so many. Yes, yes, don't get me wrong. The Chicago PD has lied about many things when it includes themselves. The cops have lied to further their own goals. This had nothing to do with them. It wasn't a story about police, it wasn't a story, yeah, they lied about Laquan McDonald, they lied about shootings, they've lied about drugs on people, that, but this is a completely separate thing where they had nothing to gain or lose by him being proved right or wrong. Like, either way in the story, they were gonna arrest a black person, so they were winning. <laughs> so, I don't see why the cops are suspected in it. But we'll see how it unfolds. It'll be interesting.